15 years you don't know God next level of growth 14 he said but solid food belongs to those who are of full age that is those who by reason of practice those who by reason of practice have exercised their senses to discern both good and evil I hope I can provoke you tonight to fall in love with your Bible. I hope I can provoke you tonight to determine that this year I will sit down and learn. Teach me, Holy Spirit. Teach me your ways. Open my eyes that I might see your truth. Bro, when you become an accurate disciple, evangelism will be easy. There's something called power evangelism. That you want to share the, whole, the, 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 the gospel with somebody and the Lord will begin to tell you this one is a cultist. You begin to tell him things that he knows that only God could have told you. That's why evangelism has died in our day. Go to the market. Our mothers are selling the market. They no longer have the, the oil that we used to have. Go to the banks. Our Christians are in the banks. They don't have the oil that we used to have go to elections that the ones positioning to take dollars then they will come and pay tight in church thieves they paid you to sell your conscience and sell your nation and some of them are taking the money because they know they can come and lie down and tell God Lord I'm sorry what rubbish We've not been taught. Go to Matthew chapter 28. Let me close. I'll finish this next week. You see, I'm not in a hurry. Oh. I'm, not, I'm not in a hurry. I'm not running anywhere. It's discipleship. We teach. Matthew 28, 8, 18 to 20. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. 19. Go therefore and do what? Make. Has the church been doing this? Make. Indicative of the fact that it's a rigorous process. Make. The same way the Bible says, and God made man. Make. He said, make disciples of all nations. That means that it's not only pulpit ministry. If you are a banker, your assignment is to make disciples. That's what the apostle should teach you. That's what the prophet should teach you. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. 20. Teaching them. Teaching. Can you teach? Somebody who doesn't know anything about the Bible meets you and says, why did Jesus have to come in the womb of a virgin? Why did he not just appear? Would it not have been easier for him to just appear and say, I'm God? That one is more powerful now. Why go through the stress of being in the womb of a woman for nine months? Why? Can you explain theologically? we have been attending church for years for years all we know is that breakthrough is coming next week can you explain why why the virgin birth was necessary that's why all kinds of preachers we just rise up and start talking rubbish and we are confused see i don't know what to believe again oh god are you a disciple or you are just a church goer Teaching them to observe, again, practice all the things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always. So you see, there are four critical things here. Make disciples. Baptize them. Teach them to observe. And then this is something I'm giving you as an insurance. It's called my presence. 
That's how you know a Christian from a Christian. It's called the presence, the gift of his presence. That's why many, that's what many of us are pursuing. We, we, we don't care how much is in our bank account. If you give me his presence, I'm satisfied. The gift of his presence. Say, Lo, I am with you always. Why do you need the gift of his presence? The Christian walk will not be palatable every day. Some of you, the evil day you will face will be called the day of loneliness. You'll be alone. Ah, help me, Jesus. Ah, I know those days. I know it. I've been there before. Lonely. I know one time, I, I just left university. I lay down in my house to pray. And I was saying, God, why didn't you give me a father? I never had a man in my life that sat me down and said, this is how to be a man. The gap showed when I married. He showed. That I didn't have a man to mentor me. That's why I'm deliberate with my spiritual sons. I tell them, this is the way to treat a woman. This is the way to be a man. Nobody, I, I, I wept like a baby. How I wish I had a father. I know what it means to be alone. There are days in ministry that I felt alone. 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 One, one day like that, after a meeting, I sat in my office. I said, God, I've done everything right. You don't know me. Oh. <laughs> the people that have worked with me for many years, at least my wife, can't testify. The way I used to fast, I've done everything. What, what else do you want from me? I was in my office, area pastor at that time. Tears were falling from my eyes. What, what do you want from me? I know the truths of scripture. I'm preaching it. I've stayed true to the gospel. What do you want? And I remember he whispered. He said, son, be comforted. Crowds do not gather to hear the things that you teach. Be comforted. Just be faithful. No wonder Paul said to Timothy, he said, these things that you have heard from me before many witnesses, commit thou same to faithful men who have capacity to do what? Teach others. It's a chain of discipleship. But now we are raising covetous men, people who want to, they will steal for breakthrough. We are afraid now as pastors to talk about cohabiting because some of the people who are our deacons and deaconesses in church are sleeping with men they have not married. We are afraid to talk in church. No, not in this clan. Not here. Not here. Because the system by which God will conquer the kingdoms of the world is by discipleship must raise men in the image of Jesus. We must. Men who can wield that authority. Who for them, purity is not, a, is not lip service. It's the way they live. It's the way they live. Men who know the Son of God. I don't even want to talk about the perfect man. See, you, you say it's too hard. It's too, the perfect man, that's minimum requirement minimum to the measure of the fullness of Christ have you been taught you must be taught how to preach you must be taught how to teach ah let me show you this last scripture then I go then we pray Matthew chapter 10 verse 1 Matthew chapter 10 and verse 1 holy maramokoma the presence of God is very rich here and when he had called his 12 what? Disciples. To him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. Next verse. Now the names of the 12 apostles. Remember, he first called them what? Disciples. They were students that had learned, they had practiced they had become familiar by association to Jesus and by training they had been transformed. 
so he could call them apostles simon who is called peter and andrew his brother james the son of zebedee and john his brother three philip and Bartholomew, thomas and matthew the tax collector james the son of alphios and libios simon the canaanite and judas iscariot who also betrayed him five these 12 jesus sent out and commanded them saying do not go into the way of the gentiles and do not enter into the city of the Samaritan six, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel seven. And as you go, preach, teach, a preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The first thing he gave them, if you remember verse one, the first tool he gave them was what? The Holy Ghost. The Bible says he called the 12 disciples and he gave them what? Power. The next thing he gave them here was the message. He said, when you go, the message is what? The kingdom of heaven is at hand. What's the essence of that message? Every mortal needs to know that he's a temporary resident in this realm. A new kingdom is coming. Don't waste your entire life building permanent structures in a place where you are a temporary resident. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Next verse, verse 8. Heal the sick. Whether you are a banker, you are supposed to wield the power of healing. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Cast out demons. Freely you have received. Freely give. Next verse. Provide neither gold nor silver nor copper in your money belt nor bag for your journey nor two tunics no sandals, no staffs for a worker is worthy of his food. You know, it's easy to read this portion of scripture and not even know how it began. Do you know that before Jesus started doing this, there was already a cry in Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9. He says, when he saw the multitude, the last verse, I think it's 35 or 36, he said, when he saw the multitude, they were like sheep without shepherds. And then compassion struck in his heart. And he said, Kai, indeed the harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few. Pray the Father that he will send laborers into the harvest. It was on the basis of that, because there was a call for laborers, he started looking for his disciples. He called them and he gave them power. He said, go into the field. And when you go into the field, heal the sick cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received. Freely give. The reason Jesus was that confident is that he knew they had been taught. He knew they had been taught. He knew they had been taught.